even save the day. Welcome to Mighty House. This is a radio show for people with problems. Home improvement problems, that is. And for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email or call into the show. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. We're back now at Mike Novak's house, and we're starting to do the windows. We're not doing complete window replacements, but we're doing a sash replacement where we remove the two sashes and then we insert a new uh, vinyl window. In the process of doing that, we're also going to insulate all the weight pockets in the sides of the window, which we'll show you, and that way we can air seal the window, install the new window, and uh, put the stops back on, and we'll have a nice tight um, opening for the windows. It should be better than what was there, because they were single pane, as you can see, and uh, they're really old. These are vintage 1880s windows, so we're going to bring them into the 21st century a little bit. So we'll see how far we get. In the meantime, I also wanted to show the proper way to remove these windows, which is why he has the uh, Tyvek suit on. And what happens is because there's been lead paint used on this, or we're assuming lead paint has been used on this, we're using lead safe practices. We've got two layers of plastic on the floor. We've covered everything up in this area. We've also, behind the camera there, we've also got that air sealed. And we've got a um, fan running, a HEPA fan to catch any dust and dirt that might uh, get into the air. So once he starts removing this, we'll do the window replacement and then we're going to roll that first layer of plastic up off the floor, bag that, and now we've got, we're safe, and then we'll mop the floors after everything gets cleaned up just to make sure we've gotten all the uh, lead dust. We're not worried about big chunks of lead paint, we're worried about the small particles. Like when he starts to cut the stops off with the knife, that's when you're creating that lead dust, that's when you're creating that potential for that lead to uh, get into your system and, and breathe it in. He doesn't need to wear this suit, he could do that, uh, but the problem is he goes home, if he's got kids, his family, his family jumps on him, now that dust comes off of his clothes and it could get ingested by his kids. That's why he's wearing the Tyvek suit, just to protect his clothes so when he goes home he doesn't have to wash and change his clothes or worry about coming in contact with somebody else and potentially exposing them to lead. So, We'll let him get to work and uh, we'll step out of the way. Well, here we are again, Ron. Once more. <laughs> Once more, into the breach. Yep, we've got it all set up here. There, there are our uh, testers, our inspectors. There's the door. It's, uh, it's ready to go. We hope for a final time, right, Ron? Yes. One final time we should have this taken care of and hopefully tighten up this house quite a bit. Uh, we're pretty optimistic about what we've been able to do to an 1880s house. And uh, hopefully we don't need makeup here. Joe? Yeah, well, we're seeing huge improvements. <laughs> this this will tell us if we need some makeup air, yes. um, which is which is simply um, proof that we've done a heck of a job air sealing. By the time you've blocked out Mother Nature by doing all the air sealing and insulating, if you've got to bring in mechanically a little bit of fresh air, that's still a win because right. I you control where that's coming in and how much you're getting. Um, and, and now I can condition it as it, as we bring it condition in. Condition it, humidif dehumidify it if necessary, filter right. it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it's, so, it's, it's much know. better. All right, sir, fire it up. Let's see what you got. So I know the first time there were no rings on this fan. This thing was wide open, full tilt. Yep, full uh, tilt boogie on it. So the, the more, the, the rings constrain the airflow so we can get a pressure reading. But... The, the first goal is to move enough air to get us down to test pressure. Well, in, in times past, we had to have no restrictions. We had to move as much air out of that fan as possible to get us down to pressure. Now, we can very easily move enough air, but we have to constrain the opening to get a good pressure reading. Air sealing and insulation is more important than windows. That's, that's what we're trying to prove here. So again, we're at 50 feet. 5440 is what we saw for your initial blower door reading way back in the day. And so we're basically cut the building leakage in half of what it was. Um, Final measured leakage 2601. 2601? Yep. 
All right, so we cut it in more than half because 5440 yeah. would have been 2720, something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's good. We've gotten it uh, cut the air leakage in half. The other other thing I've noticed when we walk back in here, now Mike, is that the house is quieter. You just don't hear as much, you know, ambient noise from outside coming in, which is that, very that, strange. I didn't expect to, to find that, but it's a lot quieter in the house. That's, uh, you know, I ask people, I go, think about like, how do you know your car doors open? I mean, obviously there's, there might be a dash light, but a lot of times what, what indicates your doors open is that you hear road noise, mm -hmm. right? right? Road noise follows air paths or any kind of sound follows air paths. So the more you can air seal, the more you're separating, not just conditioned inside and outside, but also the sound from you know, outside to inside. So that's a, that's a big deal. All right, so now we're at the end of episode three of air sealing and insulation versus window installations and where should you spend your money? And Rich and I just wanted to kind of go over this a little bit with you and figure out where should you be spending your money? If you listen to the, the, the commercials you see on TV and radio, they tell you, Put your money in the windows, spend all your money on windows because that's right. going to save you big money. And, and we tell everybody that air sealing is far more important. Right. So luckily, I had uh, Mike uh, Novak's house behind us right here mm -hmm. as a test uh, dummy. I'm sorry, as a test house. So we went through the house and what we did was... It's a lab. Rich, our test lab. There you go. I like that much better. We're, this is our test lab, Rich. I'm yes. sorry. Uh, not Mike Novak's POS. Um, anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll appreciate that too. <laughs> <laughs> so we started out, this thing had zero insulation in it, nothing. And a, a blower door test, it had 14 air changes per hour. Why don't you explain what that air changes per hour is, Rich? All right, so when you do a blower door test, there's a frame that's put in the door and a fan. And what it does is it's, it, negatively pressures the house and then it monitors pressure inside that house and outside to determine how much airflow is coming through that fan and basically how restrictive it feels right so it replicates a 20 mile an hour wind blowing on all, against all sides your house. all uh -huh. sides at the same time right so basically what it's doing then is it's going to come up with a, a mathematical formula and tell you how big the hole in your house is yeah and at 14 air changes per hour, and by code, we're striving for three. Right. For new homes so, today. Yes. So at 14 air changes per hour, I'm just going to throw a number out there. It's probably got like a, a hole in your house that's 15 square feet. Yeah. It's like having you know, the windows open all the time almost. Like heating and cooling your house with the windows open. Right. Right. That's it's a lot of air changes in your house in an hour. That's a leaky house. Right. And this house behind us is, was built in the 1880s. They didn't care about that. You threw another chunk of coal in the fire. You know, it, it, that's all you did. So right. it, was, it was really no, that, not that big of a deal. Um, but now Mike has to live in this thing and he has to pay the gas bills and it's just brutal. When I was talking to him about it, he kept this thing at 64 degrees, 63, and at night down to 58, trying to save money. Um, and it just, it wasn't working. So. What we did, 14 air changes per hour, that means all the air in your house escapes and re is replaced 14 times in one hour. An hour. And per that's hour. if there's only a 20 mile an hour wind against your house. Again, that's what part of this is. If it's absolutely still outside, you're yep. still going to have heat loss or cooling issues because of thermal convection. And you know what I mean? So there's right. other things that come into play. But this is a great way to test it. So Right. So, so where did you start then? We started with um, attic and basement insulation. So what we did, yeah, we did, uh, we did the attic. We air sealed everything, and then we went ahead and um, insulated to an R49 in his attic. And then we also put all the vent chutes in. And and you can go back. We've got previous episodes of this. You can go actually go find and how we did that. Um, and so once we air sealed everything, and put all the insulation chutes in. That what right there, just doing that reduced it four air changes per hour, dropped it to 10 air changes per hour. And if you compare the air changes per hour and how much Mike spent to do that, that was $475 for every air change. So in reduction. Gotcha, gotcha. So that, that's where that came in. So that financially, 
bang for the buck, that's not too bad. So, so you said he spent about two grand or, or wait, no, 10. So $4,700 to do the air sealing and all the insulation and the, the ventilation chutes and the rafters. Right. So $4,700, but he reduced his heat loss or air changes, reduced them by four air changes per hour. Correct. It's a Correct. good move. Yeah, so, and, and so that, that helped him out a lot. I think he ran it up to uh, 65 degrees during the day and 60 at night now that he had that. Um, and then we, so then we went around and we drilled uh, right there, all these little holes you can see. We went all the way around the whole house. And yeah, we, like over your shoulder right there, it looked like a whole white line. That's yes. Holes for what they call wall fill. Right. So we dense packed it with cellulose insulation, all the walls, and went all the way around. We tested it. And when we did that, we, we ran a test and we found a bunch more holes that we didn't know were there that were in, you know, where an addition had been added on in the back. We found holes through that, that it was just wide open. So we went through and we ended up doing two more tests just to get all the walls tightened up. And at the end of that, we had dropped it to 7.1 air changes per hour. And so- And that would almost pass Florida's law. Yeah. Florida only requires seven. <laughs> oh, really? Really? Yeah. So there you go. Um, and that was, $7,800 per air change. And that, that includes drywall, painting, because we blew a couple of the walls out when we were blowing it in or dense packed it so much that the, the plaster blew off in the foyer, uh, underneath the closet. It just, so we had, to, we had some plaster repair and painting to do. Um, but that, that reduced it down to seven air changes per hour. So then we went around and we changed all these windows, these, most of these were original. There were some that were probably put in in the 60s, maybe 70s. Uh, but all the glass was installed. Most of them had storms. And, and so the whole idea here was to prove that that's where you spend your money, air sealing and insulating. So we went through, and uh, you'll see at episode three here, we changed everything out. We took out all the weights. We foam insulated, air sealed the windows, caulked them on both sides set brand new windows in, and that only reduced it 0.4 air changes per hour. Yeah, you went F. from 7.1 to 6.6. .6. And we changed 30 some windows. And do you remember how many windows there were, Sonar? Like 35 windows? Oh, a lot. I mean, especially on, uh, especially on one side, I think there were like seven or eight just on one side, one floor. Right, so, so we didn't even get one air change per hour by After, replacing the windows. By replacing the windows. And if you were going to try and get an entire air change per hour out of your windows, you'd have to spend $18,343 per, hmm. per air change. Now, the one thing that I did ask about this morning that we have to go back over is I still like to kind of know his cost savings for energy usage. So he's going to have to do you, us a favor and go back into his, some of his old bills. Yes. And kind of make notes. What was I paying and what was I keeping a thermostat at? Right. And that's heating and cooling. Then do that now based on all the improvements because, you know, I've done this where we put a double the size of houses and reduce their cost. Correct. Because yeah, we, we did the air sealing and stuff. Didn't change the windows in the existing house. No. We fixed all the mistakes. Yes, exactly. So, that's exactly what it is. So, um, again, to, uh, to do attic insulation, air seal your attic, you're gonna spend about $475 per air change of savings. You're gonna save air changes per hour. $7,000, $7,800 if you go around the whole house, and this is a, I don't know, 2,000 square foot house, 2,500 maybe. So it went all the way around the perimeter, two story. So uh, you're 7,800 bucks, and you're gonna, you're gonna save three air changes per hour, and you're gonna save not even half of an air change per hour by doing 35 windows and, and air sealing and installing brand new windows. Because if you look, these old windows, they have glass in them. They still, they still have glass. And Might air's have a not gonna leakage, go through that. But not, right. right. The air's not gonna pass through this glass just like it's not gonna pass through the new glass. So right. with that, uh, we'll sign off and say thanks. And uh, got any comments, leave them down below. And uh, maybe Mike can put his heating and cooling bills down there and post that and let us know what he's got going on, too. So thanks awesome. a lot. Appreciate your watching and uh, keep it square and level. Until next time. There you go.